Welcome to Friday Night Family Worship. I am on board and my <laughs> co-pilot is with me, Angela. Good to have you here, honey. Yeah, it's always good to be here on Friday nights with you and to have family worship. And you know, everywhere we go, people say what? They love family worship. That's right. And it's a blessing, isn't it, honey? And, and it's good for us, too, because it's not only a program that 3ABN is providing, but it is a time for us to also remember that the family is only as strong as its component of worship. Mm -hmm. The family that worships together stays together. And we've got a family here today. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. We've got a family over here. I We're going to start by introducing... Well, are we going to say Happy Sabbath? Hey! Happy, <laughs> Happy Sabbath! Happy <laughs> Sabbath! Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's getting Latino on me. That's yeah, yeah. To over here, but over that's here. okay. <laughs> Honey, why don't you go ahead and start by... Well, let's start over to our yeah. far left. And introduce He's not a stranger. He's been on the That's family right. worship on, before. I'm glad I'm not a stranger. Um, actually, <laughs> I'm Donald Owen, and I actually work in the production department. I'm kind of what they call on call. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I also work at the church on personal ministries. Yes, uh, yes. We go in the community. We do lots of things, giving out um, books, distributing books. And uh, we also work with an um, addiction recovery group. Oh, yeah. in the community and we've been doing that for three years and it's been very successful so mm -hmm. uh, wow. helping people in the community overcome a lot of addiction wow. so well good to have you here so, donald yeah. and mm -hmm. katrina labrinsky yes tell us what do you do and who you are for those of us who may not have known you before well i am originally from the chicago area okay and i moved to southern illinois mm -hmm. and i recently graduated from andrews university with my master's in youth and young adult ministry. Okay. But currently I am doing literature evangelism and Bible work for the surrounding area. Okay, well good to have you here. Mm -hmm. And also she's here. a singer. Very good singer. Beautiful singer, singer. She sings at our church. She sings at many churches. Beautiful voice and she's mm -hmm. a blessing to our church. Mm -hmm. Good to have you here, Katrina. Good to be here. <laughs> and two other people that are not strangers. No. First of all, my bodyguard, <laughs> Luis. <laughs> I do rent them out in <laughs> English and Spanish. So, good to have you here, Louise. It's good to be here, Pastor. Yes, tell the audience that may not know you what you're doing. And where you're from. Well, I'm originally from Cuba. Mm -hmm. I'm currently doing um, the program manager. Mm -hmm. And that entails all nine uh, of our programs or nine of our channels, even though the ninth one is not up and running yet, which yeah. is the praise um, channel. But we're excited that God, through all the challenges, He manifests Himself in an amazing way. Right. And uh, it's, right. Um, it's good to be here. It's good to be able to worship on Sabbath, and mm -hmm. to be able to let our viewers know that we are their, their family. That's right. That mm -hmm. you know they are an extended family of ourselves and we love spending this time with them. Okay, good, good to have you. Mm -hmm. and to your right as somebody I know you know very well. My lovely <laughs> wife, Xenia. Yes, I'm Xenia Capote and I work here at the uh, finance department and I've been enjoying people's calls and talking about the, the worship mm -hmm. service and oh, yeah. how they like to to join us and they feel part of our family when we sit around the table and, and sing songs and talk and, and they really enjoy that. Mm. Yes, they do. Are you Cuban also? No, ma'am. <laughs> uh, I am from El Salvador. El Salvador. El Salvador. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to say Happy Sabbath in a different way. Yeah. Language. Feliz Sábado. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. As you know, we also enjoy music. And I'm going to give uh, Sister Zenia a chance to make her way to the piano because today our topic is about intercessory prayer. Mm. Now, we talked earlier and we said if we do a topic on love, that's like the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. If we say God, the love of God, that's the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we narrow it down to love the Lord your God with all your heart, we, that's the first four commandments, love your neighbor as yourself. But today, instead of saying we're going to do a topic on prayer, we're going to do one on what, honey? Intercessory prayer. Wow. And that is... Jeez. Standing in the gap in yeah. so many different ways. Yeah. Uh, who are you praying for? Mm -hmm. Who's praying for you? Are you praying for someone? Is someone praying for you? Mm -hmm. uh, is the church praying for you? Are you praying for the church? Mm -hmm. Who should you pray for? And why should you pray for them? Are you praying for the pastor? <laughs> Thank you. That's right. We need yes. prayer. Amen. And um, so we're going to talk about that today because I know that many of you watching, I would say all of you watching can right away think of someone that you need to pray for. Right. And this program, we're going to walk through the Bible and see the many examples and even in experiences and testimonies of what it means to pray and how God really honors those who remember others in prayer. Yeah. You know, it's easy to say, Lord, I need, Lord, yeah. I need, Lord, I need. Mm. But it's something altogether different. And you'll find out from Scripture how God wants to bless us when we think outside of ourselves mm -hmm. for someone else. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to begin with a song that I know that you all know. If you have a hymnal at home, uh, it's 478, Sweet Owl Prayer. But it's such a familiar hymn, honey. Very many people know it. Let's sing the song together. And we'll sing all three stanzas, Sweet Owl Prayer. I picture that verse and shout while mm. passing through the air. Mm. No more. Farewell. Farewell. <laughs> Sin, yeah. trials, tribulations. Farewell. Praise the Lord. All awesome. the heartaches. Mm. Over. Oh, wow. Sickness. How long? Over. Sickness yes. over. Mm -hmm. Death over. 
Mm. Suffering, pain. The next song is As We Come to You in Prayer, page 671. And the words are, Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away mm -hmm. from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound. Amen. Amen. May our lives be transformed by your love. May our souls be refreshed from above. At this moment, let people everywhere, including you, join us now as we come to you in prayer. It's a single chorus where we repeat it twice. What a wonderful song. I've heard this in churches many times. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound. May our lives be transformed by your love. Sure, let's bow our heads. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, no other name. And we thank you and praise you for this blessed Sabbath evening that is upon us. Lord, take our minds, our hearts far away. Let us not think of the things and worries of this world, the pressures of this world, and the struggles of this world. Help our minds be transformed by your love. So, Lord, we ask that you'll come into this place, go through the television waves, and speak to each heart as they are watching and listening to these wonderful words of life, intercessory prayer. So, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Open our hearts, and Lord, please accept our praise to you. And we thank you in the worthy and most precious name of our Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, honey, for that heartfelt <laughs> prayer. <laughs> thank you so much. You know, prayer, how can you talk about prayer and not yeah. pray? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of our programs are wrapped in prayer from yeah. the beginning to the end. I am glad to have this panel with us. Uh, I am too. Katrina is the first time with us. Glad yeah. to have you here. Glad you could make that. But uh, Donald and Zenia? Mm -hmm. Zenia, which one? Zenia. Zenia, yeah. the right accent. Mm -hmm. And uh, Luis, <laughs> uh, he's the, he is very much involved in prison yeah. ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he goes yes. and speaks to the yes. Spanish population in prison. Mm -hmm. And he has a wonderful audience. Mm -hmm. and praise God for that ministry. And your wife yeah. also, you both reach out in a beautiful he way. He preaches, he sings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need a microphone when we sing at church. <laughs> no. I made a mistake and gave him a microphone one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, <laughs> the microphone is for amplification, which you do not need. <laughs> no. Nope. I love this guy. Great, great gentleman. Yes. And Donald and his wife are so on the battlefield for the mm -hmm. Lord in so yeah. many ways, witnessing and reaching out into... It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's a passion that you yeah. have. Yes. Oh, it's, it's yeah. awesome. It's reaching and out. The, what you see, you know, the results of the fruit is just, it's just been incredible. So mm -hmm. if God gives you the door, you've got to step through it. You just be foolish not to. So. Yeah. And do it on, in all your might. Exactly. Amen. And, yeah. and Katrina, we've seen Katrina through the years grow and yeah. move into different areas of ministry. And we mm -hmm. thank the Lord for your 
your dedication to get that degree and now you're putting it to use to build God's mm. kingdom. Yes, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. And honey, boy, it's been a long time. We've grown together. And uh, that's why I decided not to color my hair. I wanted people to see I've been around a while. <laughs> but used one to be jet black. <laughs> used to be jet black with help of just for men. <laughs> now, now I'm going to glow just for God. Amen. Let's, let's go ahead and launch into the topic. Yeah, now, intercessory prayer. Once we were in Zimbabwe, and then the next year we went to Zambia. Mm. And what was interesting about that, we were with, with Maranatha, and we had a chance to cross in from one country to the other and although they were just not so far apart just a bridge's length mm -hmm. on the victoria i think it's victoria bridge yeah i think so uh, victoria bridge just a bridge's length yeah. from one country mm -hmm. to the other and they and so when you leave one country you go through the border and then you're on the bridge they call it no man's land mm -hmm. meaning you are not you're not anywhere you're not in any country mm -hmm. till you get through the other That's border so. mm -hmm. and i thought wow you could be on earth in the middle of two countries and you are in no man's land. Wow, that's incredible. And I thought, how many people are in no man's land in their lives? Mm. <laughs> because we are not becoming the bridge yeah. between yeah. their trial mm -hmm. and their blessing. Wow. Mm. Mm. Wow. And so today we're gonna look at how we can become the bridge mm. between where they are in their difficulties of life mm. and where they could be mm. if somebody would just pause and pray for them. Right. Because I'm sure we could share some stories. There are people, I mean, there are times that we don't even feel like praying. Mm. Oh, and sometimes yeah. when I feel the way my wife will pray, mm -hmm. when she doesn't feel like it, I will pray. Mm -hmm. And we don't just have this general, general don't feel like praying. No, no, no. But trials and challenges do yes. come. Scourges. And sometimes you say, oh, uh, mm -hmm. honey, would you pray for us? Mm -hmm. And she says the same thing. Would you pray? And we hold each other's hands yeah. and Amen. we bridge the gap for each other. Amen. I'm sure you've done that as husband and wife. Oh, yes. Yeah. Many times. Yeah. You know, when you chose this uh, topic, I go back to the prison ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's all in the story prayer. Oh, that's right. You know, they're, they're not with their families. They're constantly praying. Yeah, and it's true. beautiful to see when the miracle starts coming back mm -hmm. and when we pray for a particular child or oh, yeah. a family member mm -hmm. and, and the prayers are answered. Amen. And that oh, encourages so the group. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. And when, we're, when we talk about pray, prayer, it's so amazing because it's a way that we can communicate with God. It's our direct it connection to Him. And sometimes when you are first starting to have a relationship with God, That's right. when you're first starting, you open the Bible for the first time. And, and some people, when they tell you, oh, I, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And when you see them just, just talking like a friend. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so beautiful because in that particular setting, um, they need to rely on each other. Mm -hmm. They need to form friendships real quickly. Mm -hmm. And then they realize how, how magnificent the friendships are like we are with Christ. Mm -hmm. And when they see us coming in, um, you know, Brian and Dan and myself, we go on Sunday. When they see us coming in and they see the love like that we have of God, yeah. then they want, they thirst for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's beautiful because as they see the power of God, then mm. more and more requests are coming in. That's right. And that's what, uh, what encourages me. Mm. Amen. And um, wow. let us go. I, I, you know, we always have an outline with us whenever we do this topic. Mm -hmm. It just kind of keeps us on track. But um, there is, a, there is a, an example in Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30 to 31. And as I talked about the gap, you know, the bridge between where we are and where nice. we can be, between our trials and tribulations, between our dark moments and our bright moments where God breaks in. Uh, I'd like to have my wife, honey, read this first one for us, Ezekiel 22, verse 30 and 31, because this is saying how, how God, well, read it and we'll explain it yeah. afterwards. So I sought for a man among them mm. who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Mm. Therefore, mm. I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. Mm. Wow, so if somebody, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. <laughs> How did I pick this scripture? I know. Somebody to build a wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> you know, the, build the it's wall. such a political <laughs> pun now in our yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, but but the point that I want to make it somebody to stand in the gap in the Amen. gap if someone were willing to stand in the gap mm. Amen. then the Lord would as I read it he would have withheld his indignation mm. but he said there's no one standing mm. in the gap mm. there's no one really standing in the gap and can you think of examples and I always like to open it up for us to share stories some of you might think of examples where Somebody said, you know, last week I just was wishing that somebody was there for me. Mm. Oh. Mm. I, I, I didn't get a phone call. I was at the lowest point of my life. I felt like my whole world was going to fall apart. And there was no one there for me. Yeah. And so when we think about this text, in what ways can we, be, can we stand in the gap? Let's start with our family. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, everyone has someone in their family. Oh, yeah that doesn't know the Lord or mm. have a, a very weak relationship with the Lord. Can you think of any in my family? Oh, yeah, yeah. and mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have siblings I pray for yeah. all the time. Yeah. And, you know, every day we pray for your sister. That's right. And her family and your brother and, and um, their families. And it's constant. You've been praying for your sister oh. mm. all our married life. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't, see the, we didn't see the impact of that until one day she called and said, God has been so good to me. Mm -hmm. Well, we think of the Bible. Job, it says that he prayed for his family, yeah. yes. each of his mm -hmm. children by name. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. you know. I know for me, um, mm -hmm. my parents have been my interceders, mm -hmm. and they have yeah. prayed for me. And if it, wouldn't, if it wasn't for them praying for me, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Mm -hmm. And where I am today, yeah. I know that there's been many times where I've been in, um, um, my parents have prayed for me when I'm driving on the road that the mm -hmm. Lord would protect me. Right. And I remember an incident in 2010, I was um, driving home from church and I had just um, accepted the call, the, the pastor had spoken on the prodigal son, I had just rededicated my life to Christ. And I was driving home from church and I was, it was icy and um, very slippery and all I remember is waking up in the hospital bed mm. and my pastor at the time was there at the end of the bed and the nurses came in the room and they said young lady you were very lucky mm. you were in a car accident with a bus mm. and the school bus had actually rolled it was on top of me on the driver's side they had to use the jaws of life to get me out of the car oh my. and I walked out of the accident with no broken bones no scratches nothing and I remember we went to the scene of the car and afterwards we looked at the car and the seat the driver's seat where I had been driving was broke it had broken it was reclined back and I believe the Lord broke my seat. Yes. If it hadn't been broken, the bus would have hit me head on. Wow. And my life would have been taken out. Oh, so wow. the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's and right. all, of our, all of us who are on God's side are a target, and the devil knows that. That's mm -hmm. right. And so if it's not for us interceding and praying for those around us, then, you know, we would not be where we are today. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, boy, mm -hmm. that's... That's a powerful what a story. story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you Serving think back, you think, God. wow, my life was spared. Yeah. Because yeah. as you said, you, when you leave the house, your parents pray for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember years ago, I won't mention his name, but there was a couple in, that we know very well in Fairfield, mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the husband, who had not yet become a member of our church, mm -hmm. you know, of, I, of which I speak, he said um, he woke up one night and the bed was empty. And he, yeah. he wondered where his wife was. And he peeked mm -hmm. in the living room and he saw her there praying mm. Mm. and he knew that she was praying for him and he mm. and and she had said to us don't leave this church until you baptize my <laughs> husband mm. Mm. it was amazing remember that should I say the name? They have a oh, yeah. unusual first. I'll just say the okay. first name: Lois and Clark. And who do you think of? <laughs> Superman, <laughs> right? <laughs> Clark Kent. That's it. Yeah, we call him Clark. And yeah. and it was amazing. So, and, and praise the Lord. Before we left. He was baptized. Yes, yes, he was. But he called me into his home one day and he said, I want to tell you something that my wife doesn't even know. Yeah. He told me his struggle. He said, when you came to visit us once, behind that portable bar was a whole lot of alcohol. Mm. She doesn't even know there's none there anymore. I got mm. rid of all of it. Wow. And he told me how the many nights he woke up and she was praying for him, interceding for him. Mm -hmm. And she was on her knees. He saw her and he said he couldn't understand it until one day 
he could not find his keys to his vehicle. Mm -hmm. And he was going to be late, lived, worked all in San Francisco, and he lived a good ways away. Finally found his keys, rushed out of the door, and he said, had he left earlier, oh. mm -hmm. there was a multiple car pilot. Yeah. Wow. And he said, I would have been at that spot yes, at that time. Mm -hmm. And he said, from then on, mm -hmm. I never questioned God mm -hmm. when difficulty arose. Mm -hmm. He wants me to leave late for a reason. Mm -hmm. But his wife was praying for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the Lord does something in our behalf when we pray for people. Now, this is a huge scripture. Let's go to the next one. I want to have... Um, I'm going to have Donald read uh, Job 42.10 because who can you think of that had more trials than Job? Uh, <laughs> now, you might say, well, I do, and you could very well be uh, in that category to some degree. But how did Job's trials become resolved? Mm. I'm going to have um, Donald read uh, Job 42.10. Uh, verse 10 says, There and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And that's, that's incredible to me that mm -hmm. here's Job through all this trial and test, you know, and, and it comes to his mind that all he does is pray for these friends who are actually trying to turn him away from God in I a sense. Know. And here he is, he's pleading and praying on their behalf. And look what God does from him. His heart was with his friends. You know, he could tell he loved his friends. And he, mm -hmm. You're going through all this and they're trying to condemn you and come at you and here you're praying for those people. It's good mm -hmm. to pray for, for your enemies. Hurt you. Yes. yes. And now that enemies. when you mentioned that in the Ellen G. White writings, yes. she has a book about prayer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in the chapter of intercessory prayer, mm -hmm. there is a quote that says, Let us pray not only for ourselves. Mm but for those who have hurt us mm. Yes. Mm. and are continuing to hurt us. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. So right now we're mentioning, you know, that it's not only for the people we love that we pray, mm -hmm. exactly. but we have to pray for our enemies, mm -hmm. for people that hurt us. That because that, in a sense, Job's friends were hurting him, yeah. you mm. know, yes. and he could tell and he didn't know how to tell them, but he could pray for them because mm -hmm. they were his friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm but there's other people that might not be our friends mm -hmm. and are hurting us. And it's better to leave them in the hands of the Lord than mm -hmm. take it yes. into your own hands. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, right. that's, that's very true. Yeah. You know, uh, this past week, two weeks ago, when I was uh, at the prison ministry, one of the guys said, hey, I want to be baptized. I want to become an Adventist. And um, he mm -hmm. says, what do I do on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I said, what is it that you do? Well, I go to church. I spend time with God. And as we look at this, when we start praying for others, mm -hmm. when we make a list of individuals that are in need, when we look at the need that is in the community, in our home, in our, in mm -hmm. our country, mm -hmm. and we write all that down, you can be praying for hours. It's mm -hmm. like that story oh. that you told us in the sermon, um, that gentleman that told his servant, please wake me up and you know, get me out of my prayer in about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then two hours went by and, and she saw that he was still you know, fervent in his prayer. And then she said, oh no, I have to tell him. And he touches him and says, Master, it's up. And he says, mm -hmm. oh, how quickly 15 minutes go in the presence of God. <laughs> right. When yeah. you start understanding the power, A, the power of prayer, and you start understanding what God expects from you, and you start praying for others, and you start seeing results, you don't have enough time to pray. No, mm, that's true. Wow. You don't. Does it go by fast? When you start praying, especially when you have a prayer book, mm -hmm. how you have names too, mm -hmm. but the Lord will put, bring to mind those people that you need to pray for. Mm -hmm. And some people you don't want to pray for. Mm -hmm. As you said, <laughs> you, know, you, have, you have to pray for them. It's actually good for you too mm -hmm. to actually pray, pray for those that hurt you. Mm -hmm. you know, it's good and, and despitefully use you. The Bible yeah. says. Yeah. yeah. So. There's a quote that I actually read out of Stuff to Christ that you're hitting right on it. Um, mm -hmm. It's important while we get out and do work. Um, yes. It says, when men take themselves out of social life, away from the sphere of Christian duty and cross bearing, when they cease to work earnestly for the master who worked earnestly for them, they lose the subject matter of prayer and have no incentive to devotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their prayers become personal and selfish. Mm -hmm. Wow. They cannot pray in regard to the wants of humanity or the upbuilding of Christ's kingdom, pleading for strength wherewith to work. Mm. So they stop wow. becoming 
internally focus on their prayers. If you're not interceding on people's behalf or getting involved in the community and mm -hmm. uh, very important. There's a quote, um, I want to ask uh, Katrina, to, on this syllabus here, that you, there's a couple of quotes here I want you to share that with our audience. It's about some wonderful quotes. We did a week of prayer mm. on yeah, that prayer. Was, that was a blessing. Mm -hmm. Boy, was it powerful. <laughs> was it powerful? Yes. Amen. I didn't want to stop. Actually. It was All so it, yeah. good. <laughs> you know, and this wasn't the general one that was that was being done on the general conference level, but well, the suggestion came at our board meeting. Yes, amen. And we said, you know, for our church to understand where we're going to be moving in the new year, we mm. need to come before yes. the Lord in prayer. Yes. Right? Intercessory prayer, oh, uh, even counterfeit prayer, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm. things that uh, will counteract uh, so many different avenues of prayer. And, and these are some of the quotations that came out of mm. the chapter in the book, Prayer, about intercessory prayer. I'm going to have Katrina read those for us. Mm. Sure. There are those all around you who have woes, whose needs, who need words of sympathy, love, and tenderness, and are humble, pitying prayers. In other words, there are those of us around us that mm -hmm. walk by every day. And just, mm -hmm. Even in our family. That's why sometimes it's good when people put on Facebook, mm -hmm. What? Uh, <laughs> pray for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Angie's mentioned, oh, do you yes. know who I had put on Facebook today? They, they need prayer. Let's use Facebook in the right yes. way. Mm. Not put on on there your junk yeah. 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 and your gossip, but say, uh, is there anyone I could, I, I will challenge you if you are a Facebook user, chances are somebody watching is, oh my. or somebody listening is. <laughs> <laughs> Just put on there, are there any of you that have prayer requests? Yes, I've done that. <laughs> Please put, we did that at prayer mm. meeting, didn't mm -hmm. we? Mm. And as we were taking our local yeah, prayers, what that. were you doing? I was on Facebook getting prayer requests from people, and I was wow. putting it in my prayer book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lots yeah. of people. A lot of people need prayer. Yeah. But but for when we oh. when we become self me focused, we forget mm -hmm. about praying for people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Continue that quotation. There are souls who have lost their courage. Speak to them. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. There are those who need the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Read to them from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. There is a soul, sickness, no bomb can reach, no medicine can heal. Pray for those and bring them to Jesus Christ. And in all your work, Christ will be present to make impressions upon human hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we pray for them and bring them into the presence of God, all of a sudden he can now impress the person. It's like taking a sick man to the doctor. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. The doctor can't do anything from a distance. Unless you, yeah. <laughs> But we bring them to God in prayer Amen. so you can work actively. You know, Pastor, um, about two or three months ago, Xenia was impressed to send the Step to Christ to all of our town. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we received three cards from him back. Really? Uh, one of those cards said, well, one prayer. Um, and we went this past weekend and we visited them. Oh. The first lady, uh, Holly is her name. She had, uh, she has diabetes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we prayed for her. She gave us the opportunity to pray with her. Uh, the second home, the one that asked for prayer, there was nobody there anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so there must have been something serious that happened. And, and we were so distraught that we weren't able to get to her on time. The third family that we went to visit, they were telling us, oh, our parents passed away. This is their home. We're only here on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Um, and we said, can we pray for you? And they says, oh, don't bother. We already prayed with our meal. Mm. And it's just, mm. it's amazing mm. when you look at, when you're trying to work for God, when you're trying to do, even in, within your community, there's always going to be different response. Yeah. There's right. going to be individuals that have the need and you are able True. to help them and give them mm -hmm. assurance right away. There are some that just are not present. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are some that just reject, you know, that communication mm -hmm. with God altogether. Mm -hmm. And this passage is here pretty much tell us we need not forget about the individuals around us because even those who are not present, we can pray for them because God knows where they are. Mm -hmm. That's right. God yes. is aware of their situation. Mm -hmm. And if we truly believe and this is the one, the, the part that I liked with Matthew 8, 8, and mm. it's about the centurion. And it says, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant 
will be healed. Wow. Wow. What mm. power. Mm. You know, if we can come to God with <laughs> this faith. assurance, mm -hmm. yeah. imagine the things that we're able to do. Mm. And that, and that uh, simplicity of faith, yes. not asking God to do something great like Naaman, uh, he was, he had all these gifts to give to those who would come, the contingency. Mm -hmm. Let me give you all these things. And, and, and uh, <laughs> it was amazing when the servant said, oh, so what does he want me to do? He said, go wash. <laughs> He's like, go take a bath. It's like, the dirty river. I am, yeah. do you know who I am? Uh -huh. I'm Naaman. Hey. But on the other side, we know the story how it ended. He finally humbled himself. Mm -hmm. But here's a centurion. It's like who, telling Donald Trump, go wash. <laughs> Any, <laughs> you know, wow. a, a president, any president, since he's our president, right. go wash in, in this dirty river. <laughs> and it's a humbling he, thing. Rio Excuse me, who do you, huh? who do you think the you are? The Rio Grande? <laughs> the Rio, the Rio, huh? She said the Rio Grande. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but mm. it's amazing. We are in the midst of a, yeah. a, a nation that needs a lot oh, of intercessory right. prayer. <laughs> yes. But... Um, Look at another example. Let's look at Moses. Who didn't read yet? Uh, I'm going to have uh, my brother Luis read that for us, a second example about Moses and intercessory prayer. Yeah, it's Exodus 32, verse 11 to 12. It says, Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, mm -hmm. whom mm -hmm. you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power, and with a mighty hand. Mm. Keep going. Further, one more. Why should the Egyptians speak and say, he brought them out to, the, to harm them, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume f them from the face of the earth, turn from your fierce wrath, and relent from the harm of your people? And so Moses is interceding. Moses in this example is like Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's an advocate. Mm -hmm. he's, he's an advocate. He's saying, mm -hmm. Lord, I know they're a the bunch of misfits <laughs> and this is a horrible journey. They've been pleading to get out. Now they're out, but look at how they're acting. Lord, okay. if you get rid of them now, all the surrounding nations are going to say, hmm, he just brought them out to kill them. Mm -hmm. The power of intercessory prayer, and um, I had the privilege of working in pastoral for a few weeks, and mm -hmm. I had a, a lady frantically who had called in, and uh, she was concerned about her daughter. Actually, she told me that her d daughter was demonically possessed. Mm -hmm. When I let her um, her um, mother see the three grandchildren, so that um, afternoon I prayed with her on the phone. Um, the very next day, um, I believe it was Mitch got a very exciting woman on the phone. She said she wanted to speak to me. She says, you will not believe what happened after you prayed with me. My daughter instantly gave me a phone call and she said, come on over. You can see the grandchildren. Oh. She wants to take her kids to Christian school. Oh. She's going back to church. Amen. And this is this, uh, uh, incredible. She said, I just thank you. Son. I, I didn't do a thing. Just, Fervent prayer of a yeah. righteous man or woman <laughs> just, availeth much. The power of intercessory prayer. Yeah. And it, uh, we are kind of foolish if we don't use that. You know, God's given us that tool. And in oh, this example that Luis just read, but honey, read the next passage right before that, right below that, Psalm 106, verse 23, because this is exactly what happened. Look at, look at how David the psalmist uh, reflects back on what happened mm. here. Therefore he said that he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him mm. in the breach mm. to turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. Mm, exactly. What did Moses do? Stand, Stand in, in the, the breach. breach. Another yeah. word for the gap. In the gap. That's Moses said. Yeah. <laughs> and have you ever had anybody stand in the gap for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I one of it. my favorite examples of this is when I believe Solomon in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Yes. Prayed, if my people mm. were called by when the Lord said, if my people who are called by my name mm. will humble themselves mm. and turn from their wicked ways, mm. then yeah. he would hear Man. from heaven and heal their land. Yeah. That's right. Mm. That's a tremendous example of intercessory prayer. Mm -hmm. But it has two major words. What's the first word? If humble. and then. Then, yeah. if yeah. my people, then. Mm. <laughs> so the intercessory act is not just something that somebody does in your behalf, but it's something that you have it's to participate with. Mm -hmm. Solomon, the prayer, but then there's something you need to do. Yeah. Turn, Turn. Yeah. and then I will hear, yeah. forgive and heal. Yes. And there's so many people that want to pray. And I want to add this. There's so many people that say, pray for me. Mm -hmm. But I remember, I won't mention his name, but one of your family members called and said, uh, I need prayer. And I said, what you need to also do is make right decisions. Mm. Mm. 
right? Mm. Yeah. I mean, you keep getting your hand bitten because you keep putting it through the fence at the dog. Yeah. Don't pray that your dog bite will heal. Stop putting your hand through the fence as an illustration. Yeah, yeah. and that's what happens oftentimes. Mm -hmm. But um, there are other times that people abound. Uh, let me, who, who didn't read the scripture yet? Sister Xenia. Uh, look at the third, the third scripture here in Acts chapter 12 and verse 5. It says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God from him by the church. Who was praying for Peter when he was in prison? The church. The church. And what kind of prayer was it? Constant. 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 Mm -hmm. Can't now, give up. Once I heard one person once say, why do we have to keep mentioning praying over and over? Mm -hmm. God already knows what we need. <laughs> In what kind of prayer do they have? Importunate. Oh, say that yeah. word. Importunate mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. We learn that. Mm -hmm. And that is not letting go, persisting with God, persevering with God. Mm -hmm. Importunate prayer. Mm -hmm. Importunate prayer. We, we had, learned that. That's not a word we use today, no. but now I'm going to start old. using it. Yeah. Important. But when you looked it up, it said praying almost to the point of? Nagging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Weeding nagging. laughs> it's, it's almost like nagging the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what example, remember the example of the unjust judge? Remember mm -hmm. the story in the Bible where the widow, she's praying mm -hmm. and the unjust judge finally breaks down and hears the prayer. Well, let me, let me make a comparison. God is not an unjust judge. Oh, no. no. Yeah. But when we, no. when we wondered, why do we have to pray in an importunate way? Yeah. What we discovered is importunate prayer brings us to the point where we start changing. Mm -hmm. our, fir our first prayer may have been, Lord, I really need a job mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, I really need a job. Third prayer, Father in heaven, tell me what I'm doing wrong mm -hmm. that I'm not getting this job. Fourth prayer, Lord, is this the job that I'm really knocking against the wall that you don't want me to have? Fifth prayer, Father, leave me someplace else. <laughs> I mean, we're changing mm -hmm. because we are saying, Lord, help me. Speak to me. And you don't have to have a prayer warrior. Oh, you have it there, honey? Yeah. It says important means urgent or persistent in, solici in solicitation, sometimes annoyingly so. Annoyingly. Mm -hmm. Wow. So for those of you who may listen to this program or watch the program, somebody might say, well, my prayer hasn't been answered. Well, when did you pray? I prayed last week. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> wow. How many times did you pray? <laughs> Let's repeat it together. Go. Ask and it shall be given. given. Seek and you will. Find. Knock and the door will be oh. open. That's importunate. Mm. Don't, Don't just go. ask. Mm. But seek and don't what let else? go of the arm of God. Seek ah. and you'll find. Mm. But don't you can't let go of the arm of God, right? Mm. Too soon. Too mm. soon. <laughs> Remember that devotion? Yes. Yeah. We had this Not devotion that blew us away. Yeah. Mm. Where it said the reason why God hadn't Press. blessed them, they let, let go, go of the, the arm of the God Lord too soon. Mm. You know, wow. that reminds me of the upper room experience with the disciples. How long were they there praying and praying? Yes. And they prayed and they say, Lord. And it wasn't until they were in what? Unison. Unison. It wasn't until, and sometimes that's what, what happens in our lives. Mm -hmm. we, we're so accustomed to asking God for things that we constantly, that's all we do, do all day long. God, please, God, please. But we truly do not get to the point in which we understand what our prayer truly means. Mm. And God has to dig down to the point where we truly understand, okay, yes, you have already prayed. Yes, I understand that your need. Yes, now I understand that there's desperation. And then, yes, now I know you've surrendered yourself. Mm, wow. mm. And it's not until you fully surrender yourself that God can answer the prayer you're asking you for. Mm. You, you know, the Lord just gave me an illustration I've never used before, so you know this is true. Where do you find diamonds? Mm. Are they on the surface? No. no. Down. Where do you find them? Bottom, <laughs> the, bottom the of earth. the ocean. Huh? Bottom of the ocean. And where else? Under the, the mountains. Under yeah. the mountains. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have to do dig. what? You got to dig. dig. You got to dig. Dig. dig in there. Deep. Sometimes we might be saying, Lord, bring out the <laughs> beauty in my life. And he say, I am, but there's so much coal and rust <laughs> I got to get through. <laughs> Give me some time. <laughs> and there's some of us in situations where the Lord is breaking off all the hard yeah. surface. Mm digging away the dirt, breaking through the coal. <sighs> Is this it yet? No, I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to refine us mm -hmm. so that one day our glory will be seen Amen. for his glory. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, yes. I feel that uh, a lot of times we just concentrate in one aspect of prayer. Mm -hmm. Ask, 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 ask. Mm -hmm. But in the other side, 
there has to be somebody we're asking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't always have to be the one praying. Mm -hmm. There could be other people praying for us. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be two sides or pray we can't me. always be asking, pray for me, pray for me, mm -hmm. pray for me. Mm -hmm. I also need to go and pray for others mm -hmm. and intercede for others. Amen. So it goes both ways mm -hmm. in order for, for my, my spiritual life to grow. Yes. yes. Wow. Um, Katrina, there's a Job 16, verse 21. It's on our syllabus under number four. You can go there or you can turn to the text. You led right into it. That's why I jumped over the next reference because you led into it so wonderful, Sister Zenya, that uh, this is an amazing text. And look at Job 16, verse 21, how the Lord brings that very point out, what it means to just stop praying for ourselves, but look what it says. It says, Oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleads for his neighbor. Mm. Wow. Who, so, oh, that one might plead for a man mm -hmm. with yes. God. Yeah. Have you ever done that for somebody? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lately I've been praying um, that prayer, it's uh, give me souls mm -hmm. or I die. Mm. Wow. Mm. It's a quote. That's right, it is a mm. quote. Yep. But it's a heartfelt quote mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. many missionaries and many people on the battlefield have prayed mm -hmm. for. Some have even modified that, Lord, give me this city mm -hmm. or yeah. I die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, like you told the story uh, during the week of prayer of a man, somebody prayed for the people in the phone book. Oh, what an um, illustration. We heard that story. It was a yeah, powerful a testimony where um, one lady thought, when they were talking about all the gifts in church, one lady mm -hmm. said, Pastor, I don't have any gifts. <laughs> he said, everyone has a gift. He said, can you pray? I could pray. The Lord challenged her to open the phone book and she prayed for a hundred people. Mm. She kept praying for them for years. I think about three or four years later, there was a baptism, a big evangelistic series held and 99, she went to the series and she heard these names and thought, why have I heard these names before? Mm -hmm. These are the people she was praying for every day. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when she found out 99 out of 100 of them were mm -hmm. baptized. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And all she did was awesome. intercede for them every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is not an illustration. This is an actual event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we have instances like that where people uh, would break through uh, the song, Someone is Praying for You, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. written by Lanny Wolf, mm -hmm. has that very story behind it. A lady who was in the mission field who had been through a tremendous tragedy, couldn't pray for herself, someone in the United States in the upper Northeast was mm -hmm. praying that same time, that same day when she couldn't pray. And it was not until they met mm -hmm. and she shared the story at a, at a big church that she said, what time of day was it? Mm -hmm. She said, I woke up at 2.30 in the morning and prayed for you. And then he wrote the song, Someone, someone is Praying, praying for You. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another example I want to bring out is, um, wow, let's go to number six. Let's go to number six. This is a very interesting one. And we're going to look at uh, Lamentations 2, verse 19. And uh, honey, would you read that one for sure. us? Lamentations 2, verse 19. Arise, cry out in the night. Mm. Wow. <laughs> at the beginning of the watches, mm. pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift your hands toward Him for the life of your young children who faint from hunger mm. at the head of every street. Mm. Mm. What kind of prayer is this? Mm. Oof. Is that, does, isn't that a moving yeah. text? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I must, I must confess, mm -hmm. I have read the Bible. I've never read that text. Mm. Mm. It's when you begin to research these yeah. texts out. Mm. That's a powerful prayer of yeah. a parent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, sometimes we think that prayer needs to be this elaborate conversation. And I'm thinking about Hacksaw Ridge. Mm. That one oh, yeah. day that he saved all those people. Oh, His sure. prayer was simple, Lord, one more. Yeah. Lord, one more. That's all he would That's say. He, he didn't say yes. anything else, but Lord, give me one yeah. more. Sometimes our prayers, mm. they don't need to be, you don't need to spend hours upon hours. You can just say the simple prayer of one word, right. help. Mm -hmm. You know, and those are the part that individuals don't understand. When you don't know what to pray, Use the simplest prayer, help. And that's, those are the, sometimes the most powerful word that you can come to the Lord with. Lord, help us. Mm -hmm. Help me. Lord, help me. What did Peter pray? Lord, Lord save, save, me. save me. Wow, wow. I also like the fact that um, I think Ellen White wrote, she said that prayer is not um, 
us bringing us. God down to, oh. to us, but us being lifted Amen. up. Amen. But, I don't want, but I don't want to get past the scripture because it, brought, it specifically mentioned, there are those of you praying for your children. Mm. Yes. Your children. Mm. How many parents or family members watching this program are saying, I, and notice how this text is so, this text illustrates a person who's in there with God. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Arise, Lord. cry out in the night. Mm at the beginning of the watches. You know, there were, in the Hebrew time, there were eight watches to the day. Each watch was three hours long. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, there were, there were four watches. Each one was six hours long, six mm -hmm. fours of 24. And so when Jesus was uh, crucified, he was at the second watch. Mm -hmm. The first watch of the day was 6 a.m., second watch was at noon, third watch was at 6 p.m., fourth watch was at midnight. Mm -hmm. And so here in the Old Testament, at the beginning of the watches, so when it was beginning to be become dark at night, it says, arise, pour your heart out like water before mm -hmm. the face of God. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of your children. Lord, please save my children mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who faint from hunger at yes. the end of the street. There's a song that you sing about that. It's called, Just Be There. Mm -hmm. Cradle in my arms, I held you. And so many funerals, um, parents want, well, mm -hmm. many parents say they want that song sung at their funeral because mm -hmm. they know that their children will be at their funeral. Mm -hmm. It's talking about how a parent raised that child, cradled in my arms, I held you, I loved you with each moment passing by, sharing joy, pain. I can't believe it's time to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. I'm and not a parent, but I have friends who are parents mm -hmm. and um, I know that you know, sometimes you, they may get discouraged mm -hmm. in, in their duties, but their job, the job of a parent, the job of a mother is more, is more important than uh, evangelists, public evangelists. Yes. Mm -hmm. a, 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 a pastor. Preacher, pastor, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Alan White said that. You know, um, on Fridays, um, Donald and his family, we get together and we're studying the great controversy. And this past Friday, Donald was talking to us about God waking him up at around three o'clock in the morning. Donald, can you share with us what you shared with us? You, you'd like me to? Okay. Um, yeah, three o'clock, he seems to do that sometimes. Three o'clock yeah. in the morning, he uh, showed me a vision of Martin Luther, which is the 500 year of the Reformation this mm -hmm. year. But he shared with me Martin Luther tacking the 95 Thesis on the, on the door in Wittenberg. Mm -hmm. He said, now I tack something far greater on a tree. And it was my son. Wow. It's the declaration wow. of my love to the world. Yes. Wow. It's a declaration, as you know, the declaration of what Martin Luther did on the, on the door, but something far greater was tacked to okay. a tree now was Jesus, Jesus Christ, and that's who we can pray to. You know, this is obviously 1 John 2, 1 says, we have Jesus who is the advocate. So, yeah, the Lord just gave it to me at 3 in the morning. Um, wow, what a, what a wonderful yeah. office. It wakes me so up that time. When you look too. at this verse and it says, Arise, cry out in the night. Mm. And a lot of times that's when God wakes us up yes. to be able to mm -hmm. let us know. So, Very good. You know, those are the moments when it's so quiet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's such a solitude oh, and that's the part of time when God can really get to the bottom of our heart mm -hmm. and, and change us. Wow, speak, Xenia. Yeah, in the, in the book, uh, Child Guidance, mm -hmm. it says, there is great strength and blessing in praying together in our families mm -hmm. with and for our children. Mm -hmm. With wow. and for our children. Yeah. So that is one of our duties mm -hmm. to, it is to, duty. to, to pray for our children. And I remember that um, when my child was young, yeah. one of the mothers of the church came to me and said to me, um, your, your ministry right now as a mother is your child. Mm. Exactly. Mm. It's your duty to, yes. to pray for her. And, you know, it's, it's not to be out there with everyone else but to be at the home with the kitchen. Train wow. up a child in the way they yep. should go. Boy, you know, I'm just, this is <laughs> so a double much. program, but I want to go to point number five on here because this is a very important one. Okay. Isaiah 59, verse 1, and Isaiah 59, verse 16. Uh, the reason why this is really important is because uh, sometimes we want the Lord to do something, mm -hmm. but he says, but I want you to do something. Uh, now, I haven't had you read one in a little bit, so read this for us, uh, uh, Luis. Verse 1 and then verse 16. Okay, so Isaiah 59, 1, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, 
that it cannot hear. Okay, so he said, is there anything he can't do? No, mm. Is his arms too short? Right. Is no. his ears heavy? No, no there's no, no problem with him. But what is the issue? Look at verse 16. Verse 16, he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Mm. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him mm. and his own righteousness, it sustained him. Now, this is a powerful prophecy. Mm. At the most trying time of the life of Christ, Intercedes. no one was interceding for mm. him. Yeah. He was interceding. Yeah. Mm. And he says, well, there's no intercessor. Now, we know in the story, his father was there, enshrouded in the darkness of that day of crucifixion. But the thing that startled me was, and, and all of it, and we have just a few minutes here to talk about this, but what's the greatest thing that God is calling us to do is intercede on behalf of our family. Amen. Oh, you have a big family. <laughs> and I do intercede. Oh, we, we pray, we yeah. pray. Mm -hmm. By you have name. a big family. Yes. yes, we do. Pray for them how? By name. By you have name. a family. Yeah. yeah, pray for them by name. By name. Mm -hmm. But here it is, God wondered that there was no intercessor. So instead of just saying, pray today in our program, we were saying, become an intercessor. Mm -hmm. Intercessory prayer. Right. At a time when, when the world and mm -hmm. the church and the pastors mm -hmm. and the leaders and our community and our new administration in the White House, mm -hmm. we all need we to, mm -hmm. to be people that are between the person in this gap and the person in that gap stand in the middle. You know, I want Pastor, when Jesus needed his friends most, his disciples were scattered. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, and we are saying, God is asking us, you need to pray. But when Jesus needed it the most, mm -hmm. all, of, all of the individuals in him, he had bestowed so much love. We're all looking backwards. We're all looking away from Christ. Yes. And this is what's so beautiful about this type of prayer, that when we're praying for someone else, we're no longer focusing on ourselves. Mm. We're exactly. focusing on God yes. and His yes. mighty power. Mm. Yes. Wow. And I want to hit this one real quickly before we all are done, because we didn't mention Jesus as an intercessor yet. Mm. Mm. I left that for the end of the program. And it's, in our, it's not in the syllabus, so if you could turn very quickly to Luke 22. It's, it, and um, Jesus is speaking on our behalf, and listen to this. He said to Peter, Luke 22, 31, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may mm. sift you mm. with wheat. Mm. But I have prayed right. for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned or when you are converted, Strengthen the brethren. Mm. You know, today, if we could leave a message with you, there are many people that need Jesus that are not yet converted. Yeah. And you must know that Christ is praying in your behalf. Amen. And Praise he's Lord. calling us to pray in somebody else's behalf. Mm -hmm. Xenia, Luis, Donald, Katrina, Angie, we are all committing ourselves to praying for someone, and we're praying for you. Pray for us until we see you again. Amen. Amen.